Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about the 2020 presidential election based solely on some new polling data that has come out from 538. And to make this video a little quicker, I'm not going to talk about the uh, the solid states for the Democratic and Republican parties. This is because these states are almost definitely going to go to their respective parties. They have been going to their respective parties in all recent elections, and they're all polling in favor of either candidate by pretty large margins. And you know, these states like California, Illinois, New York, you know, you cannot, you know, I really don't see these states, you know, even having a chance for Donald Trump to carry. So um, I'm just not going to talk about these states in this video. And adding to the Democratic column, I will be adding the states of New Mexico, Nevada, Minnesota, New Hampshire, and Maine. This is because in these five states, they are all polling very well for Joe Biden, and they have been for um, a while now. So I will be considering these states as safe for Joe Biden for this prediction. Uh, this does put him at Hillary Clinton's uh, 232 electoral votes. Of course, the um, second district of Maine, I will be giving to Donald Trump. Uh, there really is no polling data out of these two um, districts from the states of Nevada and uh, Maine. These are the two um, toss-up congressional districts. Um, so I will be using the 2016 data in which Donald Trump won both of these districts for this map. So I will be giving the states of Nevada um, as a whole as well as the second district of Maine to Donald Trump. So this is just put Joe Biden at 232. I think, you know, he will definitely outperform Hillary Clinton. He is a much better candidate than I think she was in 2016. And he has a much better chance of winning now that Trump's presidency, you know, it has not been going very well for him recently. Um, for the Republicans, as well as the state of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, these are all traditionally Republican states. I'm going to fill in for Donald Trump. Um, Missouri, that's just like Missouri, Indiana, South Carolina, they might be a little closer this time around. However, they are still almost definitely going to go to Donald Trump. So as you can see here, of course, uh, the Republican Party always has less safe states than uh, the Democratic Party, just because there are more uh, Democratic states, and the Democratic states tend to have more electoral votes. Uh, so it's really these uh, states that are in gray still that are really um, key states in the 2020 election. Uh, these other states really, uh, we should not be talking about them that much. You know, they will um, they will vote for their party as usual. So it's really these swing states that we should be talking about for the 2020 election. And so I just want to talk about how these um, polling, the, how the polling from these states has changed over time. First, looking at the state of Michigan, I think this is the strongest uh, swing state for Joe Biden at the moment. He leads by 7.4% uh, here. Um, he was up at around 10% uh, in late June, has dipped down to 7%. And I think that, you know, Michigan, it will still nonetheless go to Joe Biden. Next, looking at the state of Pennsylvania, 7.6% in Pennsylvania. Um, this is also very good for Joe Biden. Um, Joe Biden is actually now polling better in Pennsylvania than he is in the state of Michigan, which is pretty surprising considering how in the state of Michigan, you know, Biden has always been polling higher. As you can see here, he was polling by 9%, 10% before, um, but his... Um, margin in Pennsylvania has overtaken his margin in Michigan. I think this is pretty surprising considering how um, how Michigan is a much more liberal state than Pennsylvania in my opinion. However, Pennsylvania is Joe Biden's um, birth state, so you know he will do a little better in the state of Pennsylvania. Next, looking at the state of Wisconsin, uh, Biden plus 7.1 percent. This does put the state of Wisconsin in the likely margin for Joe Biden. Now, what I really think is surprising about um, here is that, as you can see here, Joe Biden has now crossed the 270 mark, which just all of all of his safe states and three um, states that Hillary Clinton lost in 2016. Clinton lost these states by less than one percent. You know, she led by four or five percent in these states. But, you know, now Biden has a likely lead in all three of these states. So if Donald Trump was to outperform his, poll, uh, outperform his polling margin in 2016, he would still lose these three states and thus losing the election. These states are all polling in favor of Joe Biden by seven points each. And I think this is looking very good for the Biden campaign. Uh, next, looking at the state of North Carolina, Biden plus 2.2. I'm just going to talk about the Southeast as a whole. Um, the state of Georgia, Trump has actually um, caught back up to Joe Biden's lead. He actually leads now by 1.4%. Biden was leading in the state for a little over a month. You know, he led at a, his peak, he led at around 1.7%. Trump has now retaken the lead, mainly because of some of, the, some of these new polls from Trafalgar, um, Trafalgar Group, um, where Trump leads by 7%. And now Trump is in the lead in the state of Georgia. 
And then looking at Florida, um, Biden has had a pretty consistent lead in this state, you know, plus 7% uh, consistently, and he now um, continues to retain his lead. So what I see in the Southeast is that um, Trump is performing a little better than he did um, about a month ago in the state of Georgia. Um, I mean, in the Southeast, especially the states of Georgia and North Carolina, I think um, he is pulling a little better in these states. So Georgia, I will give to Donald Trump with a... Um, uh, tilt margin actually because uh, 1.5 percent and then the states of North Carolina um, I believe it was lean and the state of Florida let me check Florida is 7.6 percent so Florida is actually likely for Joe Biden still now that's very good for the Biden campaign next I just wanted to take a look at the Sun Belt here in the state of Arizona Biden plus 2.9 um, a little less than a speak of 4.7 however um, you know Biden still retains a pretty consistent lead in this state um, so that will be a lean state for Joe Biden so of course Joe Biden has already won the election based on polling data however um, we're just gonna keep going and fill this out um, looking at the state of Texas this is very interesting here um, Biden did lead in the state of Texas for around uh, two to three days when he led by 0.2% and then 0.1% the next day. And then Trump did um, overtake him. He led by 0.4% at his peak after getting overtaken. So you can see uh, Trump had led in the state by around three points his entire time until late June, in which Biden actually overtook him. And now they're at an even tie. However, it does say that the leader is Joe Biden. So I will be giving the state of Texas to Joe Biden in this um, polling projection. This is just because um, it does say Joe Biden does lead. It, it, it does say even, but that's just because the margin is so small. Um, however, Biden does lead in the state of Texas by, in, by the narrowest of margins at the moment. So this puts Joe Biden at 371 electoral votes, which I think is pretty amazing um, considering how close our uh, recent elections have been. Next, looking at the state of Ohio. Ohio also polled in favor of Joe Biden by 2.5%. He's had a pretty consistent two-point lead in this state. So Ohio, I do not think, will break its ball with a streak uh, this time around. I think it will uh, retain its um, streak of polling with the winning candidate um, in every single election in the past six years. I do not think it will break its streak. I think Ohio will vote with the winner once again. Lastly, looking at the state of Ohio. I honestly think that it will be Ohio and Texas that will be the closest on election night. Um, Ohio, I do think it will still go to uh, Donald Trump. The state was polling in favor of Biden for a little bit, and they were pretty even um, in early July. However, as of now, uh, Trump has taken a little bit more of a lead. He's now up 0.3%. Biden does lead in the newest poll in the state. So, um, you know, I think it's pretty even at the moment. This is honestly a statistical tie. Um, I can honestly see uh, Iowa going to either candidate, however, I think it is still more likely for Donald Trump. Thus, I will be putting it in the tilt column for the president. So after filling in this electoral map based solely on polling data, I have Joe Biden winning 389 electoral votes and winning the presidency, and Donald Trump winning 149. So if this were to come true, Joe, um, Donald Trump would underperform John McCain's mar um, electoral vote count in 2008 and you know he would be probably the most d disappointing um, Republican uh, in the um, election you know in around two to three decades while uh, Joe Biden would be having the largest electoral victory since LBJ in the 1960s uh, he would uh, overperform um, Bill Clinton's margins in 1992 and 1994 as well as Obama's margin in 2008 so thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like as well as subscribing to my channel. I would really appreciate that and I will see you in the next video.